things are not always as they seem. <laughs> now take classic cars for example. You can have an old, obsolete, beautiful machine, but beneath that skin it can have a totally different drivetrain, a totally different propulsion, one that's fully 21st century. Well that's exactly what that is. That is a Land Rover Defender. You don't need me to tell you that. Everybody knows that. Even if you don't care about cars, you know that's a Defender. And yet, underneath the surface is 21st century, fully electric running gear from a Tesla. Guilt-free SUV motoring. So my mission is this. Selfridges, who commissioned the build of this beautiful electric Defender, asked me if I could collect it from electric classic cars somewhere over there and deliver it to their store in central London. And, Barber, who did the interior as well, obviously asked if I could wear a jacket. And I said, yeah, it's absolutely fine because it's summer and I'm going to be in Wales. So it's raining. It's a wax jacket, no problem. And that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to go there, the scenic route, via some beautiful historic British places. I'm going to get into the dry now. It's a bit wet. So you're probably thinking, how do you actually build a car like this? If you have an idea to come up with something like this, how do you execute it? Well, you come to somewhere like Electric Classic Cars and you speak to a bloke like this. He's called Richard. Hi, Richard. Hey, Johnny, how's it going, mate? It's good, good to see you. Here we are. Where do you start? First thing that happens when we drive it in, engine comes out, gearbox comes out, petrol tank, exhaust, and the fabrication guys then need to figure out, along with the electrical guys, how many batteries we can fit in and where. It's a packaging exercise. Yeah, exactly. So you've got 16 Tesla Model S modules, 10 of which are in here. Yeah. And six are in the rear, just to balance it out a little bit. Okay. Um, and then obviously the motor is centrally mounted. So yeah. balance-wise, this is actually a really nicely balanced Land Rover. I can't believe I said that in the same I sentence. I was going to say, you don't often hear that with a Defender. To quite a modern Defender. I know yeah. they kind of all look the same, but it is quite a late one. Yeah, we, we normally specialise in classic cars. But when I got my head around the fact that the Land Rover Defender is really just a classic car made in modern times. It's a modern antique. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You can still hammer and spanner one of these like you can on a classic car. So once I got my head around that, I thought, yep, we can probably do this. So we went for it. So this was the most modern car you'd e-converted? Oh, by decades, yeah. Because it's normally... The most modern car we'd done uh, before this was a 1981 Ferrari 308. Okay, so much more modern. Oh, yeah. It's not your average engine bay, Johnny. Well, it's not going to be TDI. I have to say, I, li I like the detail of the sort of spark. It, originally, we blanked that off because we didn't need much cooling. No. But then we needed a bit more cooling than just blanking it completely off. So I thought, well, rather than just drill some holes in it, let's just have a little lightning strike. A bit of detail, yeah. yeah. I like that. I even thought about putting a light behind it, but it was a bit too cheesy then, so we, was it? we, we ditched that idea. But this, this is the thing about um, when you sort of retrofit EV, you can be cr as creative or straight as you want with yeah. regards to where you position stuff, how the aesthetics are. You can see this has got like a beautiful... Billet aluminium. Big, yeah, yeah. aluminium cover so on it. Polished billet aluminium uh, engine cover, and uh, we've uh, put resin in, in some inserts here. So, And if you noticed, you're probably wondering why have you gone with this odd strange pattern but if you look up there it's kind of a, a reflection of the pattern on that's the up there so at a certain angle you'll actually see that reflected perfectly up there because the black resin just reflects it so that's why we went oh, with I that see. design so underneath there you've obviously got i can see you've got screen wash there yeah so, so we the, got the batteries of um, liquid cooled uh, yeah they are sealed as well so if you go through water it's not a problem but we've also had other bits and pieces like power steering so yeah. when you lose your engine you lose things like your heating yeah your uh, power steering and other bits and pieces like that so we've got electric power steering pump here yeah we've got electric heating uh, just there there so there's yeah. certain other bits and pieces and that there for instance is the coolant I was just about to say it looks like a little swirl pot or something yeah, it is yeah. so that's your coolant reservoir yeah. so underneath here is it's nothing more dramatic than 10 Tesla batteries so it's 53 kilowatt hours of battery pack just in just there, there. So that's the engine bay. It's a bit more aesthetically pleasing, let's say, than your typical TDI than just, engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really smart. So 
this is your charge point where the fuel filler cap used to be. Oh, that's neat. So that's your typical type, that's a billet aluminium uh, uh, electric that's sweet. cap that it actually insert is the plastic sort of like insulative bit. So That's really nice. Nice little touch. So you type two connector. Type two connector, three phase AC as well, so it can charge up to 22 kilowatts as well. So, okay. Uh, or seven kilowatts on a, on a domestic on a regular sort of like, wall, uh, one. wall socket, yeah. So you can charge this up on the motorway as well as you get down there. When you electrify a car, you're going to lose your speedo, your rev count is not going to work, your fuel gauge definitely isn't going to work. Yeah. So all of the gauges were pretty much redundant. So we just started again and thought, well, Speed Hut, which is a gauge manufacturer from the States, we work with, and they do CAN enabled, uh, which is a protocol, communication protocol for cars. Yeah. They do CAN enabled gauges. And if we gave them the can addresses of what we needed to make the speedo work, yeah. the amps one is interesting because essentially that's now, uh, or kind of used to be the rev counter, but now that's kind of simulating a rev counter by going up when you put your foot down, so yeah. the amps goes up, but when yeah. you decelerate, it goes into regen and goes past the zero line into the negative down here. That's so cool, I like that. So they're still swing needle, yeah. they're not digital. I like that. A, a Defender is kind of, Bit of a cramped sort of like place to sit, but I've found now, now that we've lost the clutch and yeah. the handbrake yeah. and the gears, it's actually a little bit more spacious in, inside, I've found. I'm yeah. looking forward to experiencing that because it's always been an extremely compromised driving position. Yeah. Always. I mean, even the most hardcore Defender owners have to admit that. You do need a hip operation if you do a road trip on one of these things. You'll still need the, the door open to be able to put your arm out. <laughs> Interior was commissioned by Barber themselves. I think that's a nice synchronicity, if you like, with the whole rugged, outdoory sort of defender. British. British, exactly. Institution, pretty exactly. much. Exactly. It's seriously luxurious in here. We've had a chance to do the interior of the defender. And what we wanted that to feel, this lovely mashup between Selfridge and Barber, so it's a true collaboration. My role really was just to advise on how the seats were set up. So we used our Barber Classic tart, which goes centrally down the seat. So we thought we'd quilt the leather part of the seats. So we have tartan and quilted leather on the front door panels and then on the fascia in front of you. And when you see it, I think it looks harmonious, looks really strong and it's been balanced sensitively. I think, you know, because you, you are limited to what those actual shapes are and which ones you determine should be quilted leather and which ones you should be determined uh, as tartan. The, obviously the skills being in the people who's crafted and customised these seats. But they've used our fabrics and they've used our ethos of fabrication to come up with something that will be practical as well as beautiful looking. You better sit in it. And it's I'll so weird it. seeing an electrical socket on the side of the Defender. <laughs> Right, so first thing, no clutch. No. Nope. You've got a go and a stop pedal. Yep. To start it up, all you need to do is put the ignition on. So your original key yep. is down here. Just There's lights and then P for now park, P for park. So yep. that's the electric parking brake. So if you press that, yep. you'll hear a little... So that's the calipers opening. So now parking brake's off and the light's gone off. <laughs> and if you press the lightning button down the bottom, that's now on but be very gentle with the accelerator because you've got 450 horsepower waiting to just explode you forwards <laughs> so the main thing is just be gentle until you're used to it on the yep. acceleration so that's it. It, it once you're used to it it's very very simple okay i'm gonna look after it obviously please do make sure it's, i deliver it this is my first elander we've built of many to come so this is very special to us not just because it's a really nice defender but this is you know, the first time is always the special one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only. And, you know, you need to take care of that memory. This is the, exactly. Okay, let's go to Selfridges, the scenic way. Here we go, doing a bit of rock crawling. Not really, but fairly mild. Tame off-roading. I'm not going to lie to you, this is not the most direct route down to Selfridges. And actually, electric vehicles are really good off-road because they've got instant torque from zero RPM. They're quiet, so they're quite respectful to nature. Of course, I've got no gear sticks. I've got no low range because I don't need low range. I don't need a low range gearbox. As you've got the Tesla motor running longitudinally with prop shafts. One going that way to the front axle, 
one going that way, so it's full time 4WD and it's got limited slip differentials in each axle, uh, which means that all the wheels drive all the time and if and if one tries to slip, it just sends drive to the others. So you've always got traction. In fact, you should have better traction than a conventional setup. Can you hear that noise? You see, EVs do have noises. They're not totally silent. You can hear the electric braking system. You can hear the switches. You can hear the electric power steering. Yeah when you put it into reverse and stuff you can hear the switches so there are noises it doesn't have any synthesized noises that whir is not actually the electric motor in this instance it's the, the gearbox and the differentials in the axles it's now that you get to hear all the bits of an off-road vehicle that you don't normally hear when you've got a massive diesel engine thudding away under the bonnet but it is absolutely effortlessly climbing up this. I mean, honestly, if I give it a quick squirt, it would just scrabble. <laughs> the Tesla Model S P85 has donated its entire battery pack to this car. So if somebody unfortunately crashes one, there's always someone on hand to buy the bits. They're very desirable as a crash car. And I actually, I very much admire Tesla's drivetrains. But I don't particularly like the look of Teslas. So for me, this is perfection. When you put your Tesla guts in something more interesting. If you're watching this thinking, yeah, but how much does it cost to convert a car like this to full electric? Well, the answer is it's not cheap. It's not cheap at the moment. You've got to really want to do it. Isn't it weird that I can be tottering through these muddy lanes and up that mountain? at this kind of speed at what 15 to 20 miles an hour and yet I'm in a thing that's off the line as fast as many supercars <laughs> it's that weird juxtaposition that electric cars kind of allow you if I was using this only around central London I'd probably get 170 miles of range driving it normally with a bit of motorway bit of town stuff like that I'm probably going to get about a hundred and 2530 miles you know the cool thing is is I can just go and plug this in over lunch and I will have topped up what I've used in probably an hour and a half and this one this particular car doesn't fast charge you can option a car when you have it built as an EV to charge faster so you can make the most of rapid charge systems if you want when you go downhill you can capture a bit of energy through regenerative braking so you're not actually using normal brakes the motor is stalling itself and feeding a bit of energy into the batteries which is really cool it's absolutely beautiful up here i've pretty much reached the summit there's only one way down imagine a world where we consume less but what we do consume lasts longer. That's the basic ethos behind this e-Defender and Selfridges Project Earth and Barber's Reloved campaign. The collection of old Barber jackets that have effectively been traded in, restored, repaired and modified, resto modded. That's what the Reloved Barber jackets are. That's what this, the electric Land Rover is. And I see it as being given a bright new future sun's come out as we leave Wales. I want to see people get very very curious about this car and even if they don't think that it's a car for them maybe a, a version of this recipe is right for them. You've got this huge amount of battery energy and this massive sledgehammer of performance that could be pretty embarrassing to a supercar owner. Just stop to give it a little tickle of charge. I have to say though Doing the drive that I've just done, 45% you know, of charge, 80 mile drive, that's a combination of a bit of fast, a bit of slow, really pretty good. As I'm dropping down now into the picturesque Cotswolds, I'm going to be overnighting here and then in the morning heading to London via Oxford and a couple of other scenic places. This is Britain at its best. Well, last night coming into the Cotswolds was absolutely gorgeous. 
this morning, different story really. Good old British summer, rain. I'm glad I put my jacket on. As much as we love the style of the classic Defender, it wasn't a very aerodynamic car. It was never gonna be the, the best car for EV in that respect, but it almost doesn't matter because it future proofs a car that we all kind of love, a characterful car. And as time goes on, there's gonna be more and more of these sorts of cars that get outlawed, unless we give them organ transplants. Converting a car like this allows me to drive into the centre of cities without having to feel slightly guilty about belching smoke onto cyclists and pedestrians. I can hear a diesel engine running and I know it's not mine. It's the Land Rover behind me. Of course, beyond the um, that barber tartan that you see all the time on the inside lining of jackets, the, uh, the diamond stitching um, feels like the softest leather, but it's not leather. It's actually what they call vegan leather. So it's sort of very, very high end synthetic material and that's Alcantara which is really hard wearing and beautiful um, better than suede this is color coded to the outside of the car like the original Defender then you just got these subtle switches here for your forwards your, your electric handbrake reverse and your ignition once you've turned the original key you press that and then you know it's alive and of course when you're sat in traffic like this the car's not using any power apart from maybe wipers or if I had the radio on and that's it I find driving electric cars in cities very calming because even when it's chaotic like this and you can't control the, the congestion, you, your little space is, is, is lovely and quiet. There's no vibration under the bonnet. You're not burning fuel just sitting here wasting energy. One minute you can be very relaxed, the next minute you can be quite aggressive and power hungry. That really appeals to me. Okay, here we go. 20 miles an hour. Ready? This is how this Defender accelerates. My word! <laughs> In fact, Richard at Electric Classic Cars has clocked this doing 0 to 60 in around four seconds. Four seconds! It's driving my throat out. Bearing in mind, 0 to 62 in four and a half seconds is an Aston Martin DBX or even a G-Wagon G63 AMG. You can feel that the weight is all really low. It doesn't want to lollop like a lot of defenders do. It doesn't feel like a, you know, a drunk rugby player. It's certainly no V8 or V6, but one thing is for sure. When you've got this kind of power on tap, the addiction is in the, the swell of the torque. Watch this. <laughs> It's an animal. It's an absolute bloody animal. A high-end retail store and brand like Selfridges completely encourage and embrace the idea of reselling stuff that maybe you don't want anymore to somebody else and that being completely accepted because what I'm not into anymore is this hungry consumerism of buying cheap stuff, having it for a while and then just either turning it to rags or or landfill you just can't live like that in the same way that we have you know reusable containers for water because we shouldn't have to put up with it anymore we owe it to the next generation and if we want to keep interesting cars on the road and me as a you know a lifelong car enthusiast I don't want cars like this to be outlawed I want their cars like this to live a second life which is precisely what's happened to this particular car remember this is a this is a really modern Defender, a 2015 car, it's one of the last, and it's not going to appeal to everybody, but I think in this instance it's a great example of a car that appeals to people because of the look and the status and I guess the history and not that engine. The engine that was under here, the 2.2 diesel, nobody loves it, nobody likes the sound of it, so do away with it. Bit of regen braking look at every traffic light getting a bit of energy back into the system the windscreen is your window into the world and the world has changed a lot since i left wales that's for sure i am about 400 meters away from selfridges i've got to go around to a different door this is going to be pretty strange i've done a few things with cars in my life don't think i've ever driven a car into a shop on purpose at least here we are on Oxford Street. 
<laughs> okay, straight into the chaos. I've had the, the go ahead from the security guys. It is, it is really chaotic in here. We are driving just literally in to Selfridges. <laughs> and this is where a defender steering lock is uh, difficult because I'm going to hit an escalator. We've got it into the Selfridges, ground floor, obviously. Right. Okay. Oh, hang on. We've got to move a couple of mannequins, a couple of handbags. People say that you don't really use off-roaders uh, to their full extent in the city. Well, I can tell you we've been through a couple of goods doors, up a couple of quite steep curbs. There's some trees that I've had to avoid, some trees there. We're now manoeuvring into position. Mind the Dior bags. How much are your hands worth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's multiple refits going on overnight. So tomorrow, late morning, this all opens for Sunday trading and it will all be Project Earth. <laughs> there you go, delivered, safe and sound inside the shop. My work here is done. One day in the not too distant future, you're gonna see a lot more cars like this, I think. If people have got the creativity and the funds to do so, think of the opportunities, think of the builds. You don't necessarily have to buy brand new. You can take something old and completely revitalize it and it still is highly revered. And luckily I've delivered it in one piece. Thank you ever so much for watching. I have been Johnny Smith, AKA Car Pervert, and this has been my electric Defender adventure. <laughs>